This video is a very fast run through of fungi geared towards leaving cert biology revision. The features of fungi, firstly, they do not make their own food, so they're heterotrophic. They have to take in food made by another organism. They are made up of threads called hyphae. One is a hypha. These are sort of filaments. They are tube-like structures filled with many haploid nuclei, so they're multinucleate. Hyphae will combine in masses to form a mycelium, and this is what's visible when you see mold growing on fruit or bread. Fungi have cell walls. The cell walls are made of this structural polysaccharide called chitin. They do not contain cellulose. So nutrition, we know that fungi are heterotrophic, they cannot make their own food, and so they fall into one of two categories. They're either saprophytic or parasitic. Saprophytic, or saprophytes, they feed on dead organic matter and they play a really important role as decomposers. We met these in ecology, so they return nutrients to the soil. So we could think of them as organisms of decay. Some fungi are parasitic, which means that they live on or in another organism, a living host, and they usually cause that host harm, so they're obtaining their food from this living host. How is the food digested by these heterotrophs? Well, the food is digested extracellularly. Enzymes are secreted onto the food, and then the nutrients are absorbed into the hypha. Some fungi are edible, for example, the mushrooms you buy in the supermarkets and you cook with. However, there are fungi that are poisonous. Many of them are poisonous, for example, death cap. And it's very difficult to identify edible from poisonous if you're not an expert. Mycologists, those scientists that specialise in fungi, they can use spore prints as one method of identification. One fungus which you have to know in great detail is rhizopus, and it's a type of mould. It's a fungus that you find on bread that's going off and on fruit. Some facts on rhizopus. So it consists of these hyphae, these tube-like filaments with many nuclei, and the nuclei are haploid, very important to remember that. And when there are many nuclei, it's termed as multinucleate. And these nuclei are not separated by individual walls, and so can move freely within the hyphae, within the filaments. And this is termed as aseptate. Rhizopus is saprophytic, so feeds on dead organic matter, and grows on bread and fruit. When you're revising rhizopus, it's really important that you can label all the parts in the diagram and look at all the past papers and do all of those because sometimes they look slightly different. So let's start at the bottom of the diagram and the rhizoids. These are hyphae that grow downwards into the substrate, so into the bread or into the fruit. And their primary role is to anchor the fungus, but also then its main role is to absorb the nutrients after extracellular digestion has taken place. Another type of hypha is the stolon. It grows horizontally, so it grows across the substrate, the bread or the fruit, and it's helping the fungus to spread. The third type of hypha is the sporangiophore. It's a vertical hypha. It grows upwards from the substrate. At the top of the sporangiophore is this swelling known as the apophysis, and on top of this is a circular structure, the sporangium. It's where haploid spores develop, and so in diagrams you often see it filled with haploid spores. Separating the sporangium from the apophysis is this arch wall known as the columella. So it's an important diagram. Make sure you can draw it and label it yourself and look at the past exam papers. So next is rhizopus reproduction. Rhizopus usually reproduces asexually and this is by producing spores, sporulation. In adverse conditions such as dehydration, then rhizopus can undergo sexual reproduction. The usual method of reproduction for rhizopus is asexual reproduction, forming spores. Spores are reproductive cells. They're not gametes, but they can give rise to a new individual. There's no fusion with another cell required. Haploid spores are formed in the sporangium and they're formed by means of mitosis, so mitosis produces the haploid nuclei. Each spore consists of a haploid nucleus and some cytoplasm surrounded by a tough wall. The sporangium will eventually split, releasing the spores, and if they land in a suitable substrate, well then they can grow into hyphae, which turn into mycelium. So remember, rhizopus mostly reproduces asexually by sporulation, producing spores, but under adverse conditions such as dehydration, well then rhizopus can undergo sexual reproduction. When you're revising sexual reproduction, these are important labels. So the production of progametangia, the formation of gametangia and suspensors, zygospore formation and the germination of the zygospore. So remember those labels. So firstly, two hyphae, chemically opposite, there's a plus strain and a minus strain come into contact. So you have a plus hypha and a minus hypha and they'll start to develop these swellings. They'll grow towards each other and eventually touch. They're now called progametangia. Haploid nuclei will flow into the progametangia, but they're not able to mix yet. Cross walls form to prevent any other nuclei from entering. Gametangia have now been formed. Suspensors or suspensor cells support the gametangia. 
The walls separating the gametangia will break down, allowing the nuclei from both strains to mix. The haploid nuclei from both the plus and the minus strain will fuse to form diploid zygote nuclei and they will get encased in this tough wall structure known as a zygospore. The zygospore will germinate by meiosis. A sporangiophore will emerge from the zygospore. At the top of this sporangiophore, a sporangium will develop filled with many haploid spores. Eventually it splits, releasing those spores. So make sexual reproduction easy. Draw these four diagrams just to make sure you have all the labels. Don't forget to add in the plus strain and the minus strain on your diagram or you could lose marks. So you've drawn your four summary diagrams. Now add a bit of text to help support your learning. So you've two chemically different strains of hypha that align, a plus strain and a minus strain. Swellings begin to form from each hypha. The swellings touch. These are progametangia. Haploid nuclei from each strain will enter the progametangia. Cross walls will form, preventing any other nuclei from entering. These are gametangia and they now have supporting suspensor cells or suspensors. The central wall of the gametangia dissolves, allowing those haploid nuclei to mix. There are many fertilization events producing diploid zygote nuclei. The diploid zygote nuclei get encased in a tough walled zygospore, which will eventually germinate by meiosis. A hypha grows from the zygospore and will eventually form a sporangium filled with many haploid spores. The sporangium will split, the spores are released. There is one other fungus which you have to know in detail and that is yeast. It is a unicellular fungus and it does not have those tube-like filaments, those hyphae. So the first place to start with yeast is to be able to draw and label a basic structure of the yeast cell. Always start with the cell wall made of chitin and then the cell membrane. And there are additional labels such as a large vacuole, dense grainy cytoplasm, the nucleus that you can add in as well. Yeast reproduces asexually and this is known as budding. A bulge known as a bud develops in the side of the yeast cell. The nucleus undergoes division by means of mitosis and a new nucleus, an identical copy, will go into this bud. The bud will separate from the parent cell, forming a new individual yeast cell. Sometimes, however, the bud does not detach from the parent cell and the bud itself undergoes budding. And this forms many attached little cells and this is known as a colony. So what are the economic benefits of fungi? Well, yeast is an important fungus used in the brewing and the baking industry, and these are two very large, profitable industries in Ireland. Also, edible mushrooms are important and many farmers will farm these on a large scale, and fungi are used to produce antibiotics. In contrast, there are also fungi which will have a negative impact on the economy, for example, rhizopus causing food spoilage and food wastage. And then also some fungi can cause disease, for example, some plant disease like potato blight is caused by a fungus. So that's a brief overview of fungi for the Irish Leaving Cert. Remember to always do past papers and check the official marking schemes. Use your textbooks, really important, and write your own notes. Good luck.